definitely be our friend as well as something to be concerned about. And I think I mentioned this in the first day of class. Uh, one of the uh, ways that the chemistry department has moved to being the number one ranked chemistry department of US News and World Report over the years is a little extra money that came in from the work of uh, a patent from Professor Alan Davison and that we were able to do some pretty exciting things with, those, with that money over the years. So uh, I always like to mention um, all the great money-making uh, discoveries that occurred using 511-1 material, and this is another example. So, um, so he used a, a, uh, an isotope of technetium, uh, and, uh, and it's being used uh, organ scanning, bone scans. It's, it's one of the leading ones for heart imaging. It's also been used recently in breast cancer. Uh, it's estimated 7 million uh, uses annually in the U.S. And so uh, this was patented as cardiolite. And um, it's really just very simple chemistry. So you're using a d-block metal, an isotope of a d-block metal, which has, you know, your exciting d orbitals. And what did he do? He made a coordination complex with that, uh, with that metal, an isotope of it. And he found ligands. Cyanide ligands, those are pretty common ligands. You've seen a lot of coordination complexes with cyanide ligands. And he tried different ligands to get the desired properties of stability and solubility. And uh, that's all it was. So he used some knowledge of radioactivity, knowledge of inorganic chemistry. He was an, he was an inorganic chemist. He's retired now. And uh, simple coordination uh, chemistry and uh, made an enormous amount of money uh, for, for MIT, and particularly the chemistry department, and uh, also this has saved a lot of lives. So imaging is something that chemists do a lot of, actually. Not just imaging for cancer or imaging of organs, uh, but also imaging of live cells to try to understand how the cell works when it's healthy. And so recently, uh, Professor Alice Ting in the chemistry department received an NIH Pioneer Award. So this uh, NIH is National Institutes of Health have started giving these Pioneer Awards for people coming up with um, uh, very innovative ideas, the kind of innovative ideas that most people would not want to fund because there's a good chance it might not work, but if it did, it would be spectacular. So she received one of these awards for figuring, for trying to develop technology to image protein-protein interactions in living cells, which is something that people would really, really love to be able to do. And so she is involved in developing technology. So developing of imaging tools is something that a lot of chemists do. It's a very popular area in chemistry. And if it's something that you're interested in, there are definitely a lot of people around uh, that you could think about working with for a Europe position. OK, so that is first order. And now let's go on and talk about second order uh, integrated rate laws. And we're going to have a little derivation for you. I always like to warn people that it's coming, because all of a sudden equations are coming in and out. And uh, you just want to know where these equations are coming from. So as we talked about last time, uh, this is an expression for rate law. You have your rate constant, your concentration of something A, and it's raised to a coefficient, and here that coefficient is 2, indicating it's a second order uh, process. So if, no, if, there's no, there, if there's nothing up there, that's 1, uh, and then 2, and again, uh, the order of the reaction can be uh, positive, negative, it can be integers, it can be fractions. But this is second order, so we have 2. Now, 